What is going on everyone? I'm Nuxpro and welcome to this Escape from Tarkov quest guide. This guide is for the guide. Yes, the quest is called the guide from Peacekeeper and it requires you to survive every single map in a row. In this video, I'm gonna give you the best map order to complete this quest and I'm gonna give you strategies for each map. But before we get into that, let's go into what counts as a survived raid. For a raid to count as survived, you need to gain 200 XP or be in the raid for seven minutes. Now the clock in the game can be a little glitchy, so I stay for at least seven minutes and 30 seconds to be sure. And if you really wanna be sure, I would just stay in for eight minutes because sometimes the clock can be off. Now, if you get a run through, you do not fail the quest, but the map does not count. So you would just have to do the map again. And if you die, then you fail the quest and you have to start over. Don't forget to go back into your peacekeeper tasks area and restart the quest because it does not do that automatically. Now with that out of the way, let's guide you through the guide, mother. <laughs> Just a quick reminder, if you can please like the video, it helps tremendously with getting my videos noticed. And if you wanna take it a step further, leave a comment that helps as well. And consider subscribing, we're almost at 14,000 subscribers. We have a bunch of Tarkov guides on the channel. A lot of comments of people saying the guides really help them. So check them out as well. All right, keep in mind that this guide is geared toward newer and struggling players. So our primary goal is to hide for seven minutes and extract just so we can get the quest done. So keep that in mind. You know, this guide isn't about getting kills. It's about completing the quests and helping people that are struggling. So what map do we do first? Well, there's only two choices. There's factory and there's labs. Factory because it's real easy to die to stuff that's not your fault and labs because lab key cards are 400k right now and it is an investment to go into labs and it's better to knock this one out as soon as you can i'm going to recommend doing factory first because you are going to save more money in the long run and how is that possible so if say you do labs right so labs 400k key card you would assume that you're gonna bring 100K in worth of gear because even though we're trying to avoid fights, you need to be prepared for a fight, especially when uh, you're spending 400K on a key card. So let's just say, you know, 500K investment to go into labs. Say you survive, right? Then you have to go to factory. That factory raid, you're protecting that 500k labs investment. So you pretty much have to go in geared, right? Cause you need to protect that 500k you just lost. So you go in geared and you get killed, right? So say your gear costs 300k. Now you just lost 800k and you got to restart the quest. And if you do factory second, going in geared you have to worry about should i go in at night uh because that then you got night vision and there's that quest at night so a lot of people are hunting players at night and then you have to decide do i go during the day where then there's like a bunch of chads during the day so you have to weigh all that uh all those options if you do factory first you alleviate that factory investment so what I mean by that is you start with factory, you can pretty much go in naked with a pistol. And if you die, no big deal. You lose the value of the pistol. What? 10, 15 K. You just do it again. You don't have to worry about going at night. You can go during the day. And the worst thing that's going to happen is you're going to lose a pistol. So that's why I recommend factory first, because you are going to save money in the long run now some tips for surviving factory uh a lot a, a lot of what you're going to do is dependent on your spawn so if you get this spawn here this is the forklift spawn so you spawn here 
almost always a player spawns over there and almost always a player spawns over there so you're already boxed in right and this is what i'm talking about sometimes say you get to spawn and you got a two man over there you got this guy chucking nades at you you can just die easily from from stuff that's not your fault but strategies it's pretty simple you just gotta hide somewhere if you get the spawn here you can just hide here and hope that you don't get pushed it's hit or miss sometimes somebody will push you sometimes they won't i highly recommend when you're moving out moving throughout the map to stick to the undergrounds and you're also gonna want to bring a factory key in because gate three the extract that's free over there there you could die to an extract camper that's next to the offices where a lot of the the fighting goes on so you want your factory key because you're going to want to extract over here at sellers or you're going to extract at gate zero over here now these extractions will give you the best opportunities to not run in the players because not many people use them so to summarize factory i don't know if i did a great job of explaining it you spawn in you try to hide if on your way to the extract you find a scav you can kill him and search him that might give you 200 xp and you can try to extract as soon as possible if you don't run into any scavs and you're you're by an extract just hide for seven and a half minutes at seven and a half minutes you just leave um and you don't need to bring in any crazy gear if you're worried about money just bring in a pistol and you can go during the day and if you die the worst thing that happens is you lose a pistol and you just do it again map number two is going to be you guessed it labs this is probably going to be the hardest part of this whole quest is getting through labs first you're going to need a labs key card to get in they are 405k right now then i highly recommend taking in this labs budget loadout we got a vepper hunter with a cobra sight and then we got the 6b 3tm armor which is a great budget armor one extra mag this is going to cost you 85,000 rubles and you want to load them up with m61 because m61 is going to give you the best chance to win a fight against a player or a raider i understand if you don't have the money then use m62 or m80 but highly recommend using m61 so now our in-game strategy i understand labs can be scary it can be uh tough i've gotten cap of the last three wipes and i still get lost on labs sometimes it's okay i understand what you're trying to do is get to the basement because there are four extracts in the basement so the easiest way to do this if you don't if you're not good with the map obviously go into offline mode and learn it but just move around the map until you find stairs and just go to the bottom oh hello that's the easiest way to try to get to the basement i know that there's a hole over here and i can drop into the basement but just move around the map whenever you find a stairwell or stairs just go uh to the bottom and you should be in the basement so there are four extracts in the basement the medical block elevator i wouldn't recommend using this one this is a pretty chad heavy used extract but if you want to use it you got to come over to this room here turn it on and now that's working now the other three extracts i highly recommend you using because most people don't use them the first one is the what is it called water sewer the sewage conduit you should have a map of the lab's basement up on another screen or on your phone so you don't get lost just go down the metal hallway i guess we'll call it 
all the way to the end. Open the door. This and you are now in like the sewer can't go that way so you just follow the sewer all the way down and nobody uses this extract the only issue is when you start it oh what am i doing the buttons over there that's how much i use this extract when you start it it takes 90 seconds to be available to use so once in a while you'll get a player that really knows what they're doing they'll notice that someone has activated this extract and they'll come try to kill you it's more on the rare side that that will happen but you need to keep that in mind so again we're starting at the medical block elevator the next extract that is super useful and you're not going to run into a lot of people is the ventilation shaft so I like to show you from this direction because it's right by the stairs So say you find these stairs come all the way to the bottom. You just go straight And to the right and the ventilation shaft is right there And you can extract 15 seconds and the last highly recommended extract is the main elevator here not many people come around here either to turn it on you just go over here through these doors it's right here under the yellow pipes and this is good there's a lot of places you can hide you can hide here you can hide in here somewhere you can hide here there's a lot of things a lot of places to hide for this one and not many people go by this elevator so i hope that helps to summarize stick to the basement try to use the ventilation shaft the sewer conduit or the main elevator try to stay away from the metal block the medical block elevator on the basement and just hide for your seven and a half minutes and you should be good to go a lot of it just depends on where you spawn and again, the more you play labs, the more you'll kind of understand where to go. So you survive labs. It's all downhill from here. Map number three is going to be reserved. Because similar to factory, your spawn can really screw you, but not as bad as, as factory. Because obviously reserve is bigger than factory, but reserve is still a small map. So it can be kind of difficult. Number one, we're going to avoid the bunker. Too much can go wrong in the bunker don't do it to yourself if you're struggling so forget about the d2 extract that pretty much only leaves three extracts the armor train don't wait 50 minutes for the dumb train because the train itself can be a death trap as well that pretty much just leaves the sewer manhole and the hermetic door bunker so if you have a friend so hermetic door unless somebody trips the alarm for you is pretty much out of the question but if you have a friend that can go over there and turn the alarm on while you're hiding over here you can get right out if you don't have a friend like me i play this game 100 percent solo you're pretty much all you can do is the manhole so avoid the bunkers avoid the inside part of the map so you want to avoid all the nonsense in here you want to avoid going through here you gotta you gotta waste seven minutes anyway so if you spawn over here just oh i didn't if you have a red rebel i'm assuming you don't have a red rebel but if you have a red rebel this is easy there is plenty of little bushes to hide in here in here and then you can just extract at the red rebel extract too easy but i'm assuming you don't have red rebel uh so you know if you spawn here on this side i think it would be more safe to come up this way hide over here somewhere and then at seven minutes move to the bunker 
get rid of all that. If you spawn anywhere down here, I would, I would go this way around, but I would go slow. I would do a lot of your hiding at the beginning because the issue with uh, getting a spawn here and then pushing this way is the people that spawn here might push this way. So I think I would do my hiding at the beginning of the raid. So maybe you spawn over here. Maybe you spawn over here. Come up to these bushes, hide for, you know, three minutes, then start pushing up this way. This could be the problem site here. Sometimes you got somebody in here. Um, if you're doing it later in the wipe, probably not. But you know, you want to stop in these bushes, listen, slowly make your way across. Try to get into this building here. Try to get in this building here. Hide for seven minutes. I would do this at night. 100% you should be doing this at night. I would be wearing some decent gear. Because now that you got labs and factory done, there's a lot, there is a lot at stake and you want to be able to win a fight if you get into it. And obviously if you spawn here, that's awesome. Cause you can kind of just push here pretty quick, hide in there. And then you're good to go to extract that manhole. But man, if you do have a red rebel, it makes things a lot easier. It's so easy to hide up here somewhere and then just extract. Map number four is gonna be customs. Now customs can be tough because it is one of the most populated maps and a lot is gonna depend on where you spawn. So best case scenario, you are going to get one of the spawns over here. That would be most beneficial, but let's start with, uh, if you spawn on the big red side. So the issue with this is, so this is getting across the water, right? That can be difficult. Uh, people like to scope this out and can make it tough. And just fighting your way out of this area can be tough sometimes. So if you get this spawn or this spawn, really easy, push across the bridge. If you get a spawn back here, you're going to want to take things super slow and there's only two routes I would go. I go, you need to go slow. I would push through this way through the trees and try to get across the junk bridge. Or if you want to push from this side, go this way, go behind the trailers jump up on this trailer, jump over into the ditch, and then push on through. But if you spawn here, you gotta take it slow, right? Especially if this is your map number four, you got a lot on the line, so you gotta take your time. Now, no matter what, I would push through this section It's really easy to get caught up all in here. There's a lot of trees. There's a lot, if you hear footsteps, you can hide. Not many people are running thermals on customs, so I wouldn't worry about that. So at night, this could be pretty easy to push through. Again, you're taking your time. You're not gonna sprint in there like a maniac, um, but I would try to avoid everything in here. There's a lot going on. If you do wanna go through there, I highly recommend just hugging this wall, whatever way you go, just hug, just hug, just hug. And maybe you can push through the old gas. That's definitely a strategy, but there's just so much going on here. Um, I think it's the safest ways to go through here or come around here. Even though dorms is arguably the most the most fighting happens here. It's really easy to sneak by over here. So that's what I think, uh, you know, you know, go off of your instinct and your experience and customs. 
but uh that's what i would do and have done now if you spawn like over here or over here it's a lot easier you can just push through the push through the forest um and as long as you take your time you're gonna miss people running to the dorms and then you have options right you can come across here get the smuggler's boat and if that's not open you can go through here through the trees under the bridge it's a little risky here but it'll be a little later in the raid by the time you get here and then push to ruaf and hopefully one of these are open so you don't have to push over to these two but it's not the worst thing in the world because it'll be later in the raid but i do like the trailer park extract way more than the crossroads extract so hopefully it helps with customs to sum it up i would try to do most of your moving through here or through here since it's nighttime you shouldn't run into too many trouble and just take your time so map number five is shoreline i personally think shoreline's easy to navigate but i do know a lot of people have issues with it so shoreline's so big it's easy to get around undetected again highly recommend doing this at night because we're doing it at night you want to avoid this whole area because of the cultists so don't even bother with this area you don't want to be anywhere near the resort anyway. So let's just do a little that. And we don't want to do anything with the resort. All right. So because of this quest, I would not recommend going this way. Right? So I so you should know you're either going to spawn on this side or you're going to spawn on this side, right? No, no, uh, no secret there. So we're not going to push through the resort because that's going to get you killed. We're not going to push through power station because there's literally only little spots here that you can get through. There's scavs here. Players come down this way. Don't advise going that way. So that leaves you with two areas down here and up here. Wherever you spawn, you're going to push up the rock passage, I think. You know, we're playing the long game here. We're trying. I think that's the best way to get through this map. Shoreline is my favorite map. I played it more than any other map. You would think this spot's busy, but if you're doing this at night, yes, there could be an extract camper there, but doesn't ha it rarely happens for me especially if you spawn down here and you're taking it slow uh best case scenario rock passage will be open so you come up here you go to rock passage easy best case scenario is you spawn here and go to rock passage or you get the spawn here and you go to rock passage um the quest sucks when you actually i actually have to go to the whole other side of the map but you shouldn't you shouldn't receive any resistance at night but down here i wouldn't go to the pier really easy to get um stuck here your luck sanitar is going to spawn in or players here and there's one exit off here and you can really get pinched in here scavs here this could be a tough place to navigate. If someone's doing shooterborne in heaven at night with a thermal, they would most likely be on this hill. So I wouldn't bother going this way. Even if you spawn crane, I would take the long way. Hope rock passage is open. And uh, if it's not, you know, there's a lot of little areas you can go through the, can I zoom this in? Let's zoom this in. Uh, boom. Oh, perfect. So you got the bridge here that uh, 
that would probably be kind of dangerous. If you push through, like you go around the rock and come back this way, you should be fine. As long as you're not running around like a maniac. Um, and by this point you should be getting close to seven minutes. <sighs> it's tough, but I run, I run through here all the time. There's not many, if it's during the day, I'd be more concerned about people, but there's a lot of bushes to hide. And as long as you take your time and you're listening, you should be able to get through here. And then if you're pushing this way, um, I would take the long way. I'd go around, hug the fence. You got scavs here, so you need to keep that in mind. Um, if you push through this way, you can kind of avoid the scavs. Just depends how comfortable you are with shoreline because you're going to need to do this at night. But uh, I hope this helps with shoreline. It can be, I think what makes shoreline so scary is you got to cover a lot of distance and you're going through areas where you would think there would be a lot of players. But if you're doing this at night, um, you should be able to push through here no problem. Hey, if you're more comfortable, if you're comfortable with this map, you can try to push this way. I'm just trying to give you the path of least resistance. And I think that is pushing through the rock passage area. All right, map number six is interchange. Now you'd probably be surprised that as Chad crazy as interchange is, I would have it this far in the back. If you're just trying to extract at night, this map's not hard at all as long is you do not go through the mall. So if you spawn down here by Emercon, you can, you can just hide in the bushes and then make your way to hole in the fence really easy. If you, whoops, if you spawn at power plant, you can just hide in the bushes and then make your way to hole in the fence. If you spawn over here, I think this gives you Emrecom. I'm pretty sure if you spawn here, I don't remember. Well, let's just go back to here. So railway, if you spawn railway, it sucks, but you're gonna have to play the slow game and just make your way around the map. So any of those spawns, I'd go through the trees here. Early game, you shouldn't have to worry too much about the scavs. Go through the trees, go through the trees, go around and get out of Emrecom. This would probably be the worst spawn. Off the top of my head, if you spawn here, I believe you get railway regardless. So if you spawn here, uh, move through the trees here. This is, there's trees here. Push across the road, move through the trees, extract. I mean, it's at night and it is, it's easy. It's, you're, you're not gonna run into many people if you're, you're outside the mall. Um, if you do spawn here and your extract is Emrecom, it's an easy push this way. But I mean, that's all for interchange. You just, if you can get over here and get to this hole in the fence, it's really easy. You just hide in a bush for seven minutes. Um, you could even just get to the bushes that are here. So you're close to the extract nice and early because everyone pushes into the mall. The only straggler you might have is power plant. Sometimes when people spawn power plant, they actually loot everything here. So I would avoid going past this area at all, but it's, I think it's pretty simple. You spawn in, you hide, you stay outside of the map and you extract. I, I don't know if I can explain any more. As long as you don't go in the, in the mall, it, it should be no problem. Last but not least is this last pile of crap we call woods. This is last because uh, if you do this at night, it's the most, it's the least populated map. There is a warning. You do have to look out for thermal kids. Uh, for that reason, thermal kids 
will most likely only be hanging out in the sawmill area. So I would avoid this whole sawmill area and just navigate through the map um, through here, through the expansion. Best, if you get a spawn up here, it's awesome because you get outskirts as your extract and you just push down. You'll be undetected the whole time. Um, I think the riskier extract is the bridge one because your looters uh, hit that one and it's it's really out in the open, especially if you do this last and you got six maps under your belt. It's not worth the risk. Um, unless you spawn over here and you push through this way and you're hiding in a bush, it, it might be worth it. But yeah, if you do this at night, you gotta be mindful of the thermal kids. And I would avoid this area because of the cultists. Well, that's way too big. Not that. I'd avoid this area because of the cultists. And just if you spawn here, push through, take your time. And then like if you push get down here, push through here. Ooh. Just take your time. If you get up here, that's awesome. Because all you have to do is push down here. And you, I've never ran into a person going that way. It's, and, uh, yeah, woods, woods can be the easiest one, but you do have to look out for thermal kids. Um, you know, it is possible to get, to get killed by a thermal guy, but. I really think this is the easiest map. It's so big. As long as you, you got some night vision and you're, you know how to navigate it and you avoid the sunken village and cultists, I forgot they can spawn here too. So avoid that area, avoid these areas and you should be, you should be good. I hope this video helped. I know we gave out a lot of information. Um, I hope I did a good job of presenting my thoughts on each map. You know, if you're new, there could be some things that I say that don't make sense. And I apologize for that. Uh, you know, we're just trying to get you through the quest. It's not really a guide on like, I don't know the maps. It's, it, it's a tough quest and it's frustrating when you, when you die from it, but as long as you take your time, you sum it up like this. You spawn in, you hide for seven minutes, get to the extract. Let me know your thoughts in the comments on what you think the best order is and any additional tactics or strategies you would like to share. Uh, and if you made it this far, please leave a like on the video. It helps a lot. Subscribe. We're almost at 14,000 subscribers. Thank you for watching the video.